Okay, I'm going to do another video. So I got some interesting responses from the video this morning. Um, really got some interesting responses on the uh, um, the bride video that I did. Um, the people that I ended up shadow banning in the video I did this morning, they uh, they've voiced their their um, displeasure by hitting the dislike button, and that is perfectly fine. I didn't do anything nasty to anybody. I pointed out what the truth was. And if you can't even begin to have any kind of a conversation about this kind of stuff or see any kind of reason at all, it's fairly obvious that it's not that a conversation won't go anywhere. And so you have to do something about that. And a lot of people disagree with this. A lot of people look down on doing that kind of stuff. But the Bible says don't have anything to do with people that are that way. You either believe or you don't believe. There's no middle ground on this. There's no, well... Now, don't get me wrong. We can disagree on when the rapture is. We can disagree on um, little things, you know, that, that we see a different facet of. That's not that big of a deal because that doesn't pertain to salvation. But when you start talking about heresies going against Christ, against what the Scripture says, those things, you're not putting your faith and trust in Him. You're putting Him in yourself and what you think you know. That's bad because that is the sin of unbelief. You're stepping into a realm that is very detrimental to you because you're not putting your full faith and trust in Christ. This has been a deception that has been taught by the church 200 years easily. Um, especially the last 50 or 60 years. It's been really bad. I'm not feeling very good. Uh, my throat is scratchy and my sinuses are all jacked up. And so I've been hanging out and my eyes are watering like crazy. Whew. But it's important to always remember no matter what we believe Christ is the one who suffered Christ is the one who was persecuted Christ is the one who was crucified Christ is the one who died Christ is the one who was resurrect buried and resurrected Christ is the one who ascended and Christ is the one that is sitting next to the on the right hand of the father those seven things we have to always keep in mind, like that number seven, we have to keep in mind. It's all about Christ. It's all about what he did, not us. It's not about what we know. It's about him. He is the word, and the word is truth. Now, you can go, like, like I showed in that video on Ephesians 5, uh, that one lady was talking about, um, in the King James, it says it. Well, I brought up the strongs on it, and, and what did it say? Her, she, them. If you're not willing to go and search the stuff out, what do you? why are you contending? I don't do this because it's just fun for me to make people look bad. I don't do this because I'm trying to um, make myself better than someone else or or be a part of the cool, cool guy group or anything like that. I do this because I see truth in here and I see deception out there. And I was very intently impressed upon me to share the truth. So that's what I'm going to do. But if you're going to come into a comment section on a video, which I don't care if you disagree with me or not, I have no problem with that. Go look at the other videos where I've left comments with people that disagree with me. That doesn't matter. But when you are in a state of unbelief and thinking weird things like the Holy Spirit is a she, uh, Christ is a she, the bride is one woman, carnal thinking, God is going to marry one woman, they're going to consummate this stuff. And I mean, and I get it from, I get all spectrum, all parts of the spectrum, all points on the spectrum. If you're going to be believing in stuff like that, that's unbelief. You're not putting your faith and trust in Christ. I can't have a conversation with you. You have to come to a place of belief. People aren't going to like it, but you know what? It is what it is. Some people you have to block, some people you have to shadow ban. I only shadow ban you because I want you to get the truth. I want you to keep watching the videos and see what the scripture is telling you. A lot of the times people look and they see, they look at the little picture down here at the bottom and they see me and that's what they get upset about. Swing your eyes. If I have to, I'll turn the camera off. Swing your eyes and look at the scripture. Listen to the scripture and what the scripture is telling you. You can disagree with me and say I'm not rightly dividing. Okay, then why do I put so much scripture up that proves the point? And you give me one, two, three. Simple. So when you're in the sin of unbelief, and this falls under a lot of different things, you can easily be right there at the threshold 
and then get caught up in a false doctrine or a fairy tale and get drug off and get drug into unbelief. Don't do that. Now, you can't lose your salvation. Once you're saved, you're saved. But you got to ask, is a person really saved? There are people who are denying salvation, yet they're in church every Sunday. They're going to Bible study. They're singing. They're praising. They're all kinds of stuff. But they're not saved because they never fully believed. This was the easiest way God knew to save man. All you guys got to do is believe. You're going to have it covered. But he also knew for some people that was going to be the hardest thing for them to do is to put their full faith and trust in Christ. Because of their pride, their arrogance, and their vanity, they desperately want to have, be, play a part in their salvation. Or scooch him over and go, let them see me, Lord. I, I, I helped. I helped. I played a part in it. No. It is Christ and Christ alone. That's it. Done deal. You have no factor in this. You merely are having faith. And the thing is, it sounds so simple, but that's what's so amazing about it is it is so simple. But for some people, they'll end up going to hell because they refused to choose Christ. They refused to believe. Of course, we have John 3.16. This is the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The ESV doesn't have it in there, but the King James does. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Simple. Honestly, you could you could consider that salvation too. And the gospel. Simple. Simple, simple, simple. Now here's Hebrews 3. We're actually going to read Hebrews 3 after we do a few of these scriptures. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. Look at what he's saying here. Look at the key words. Take care, brothers. He's talking to saved people. Or they should be saved. Then what does he say? Lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. That's an extremely interesting statement. And we're going to go to Hebrews 3 and do a deeper study on that. But we're going to cover a few more of these things. It is 100% applicable that somebody called brother or sister can be walking in unbelief it seems like they're a christian i can i can name names off right now of people that we've been talking about recently that are doing that very thing when you take your faith and trust from christ and you put it on something you're doing you put it on anything else you are now walking in unbelief you're not saved you have to decide who you're going to follow you're going to follow him you're going to follow you or some preacher out there who is preaching heresy anyway because he's making cash. Mark 9, 24. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, I believe. Help my unbelief. That's an interesting statement. I believe. Help my unbelief. You must believe. 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 I said it five times. You must, you must believe. That's where salvation comes from. It's not automatic. Oh, I know about Jesus. I'm good. No, you can know about Jesus. All, atheists know about Jesus and they don't have faith. They don't believe. They're not saved. What does that say about you? Just saying. I'm just pointing out the obvious. James 4.8 Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. What's double-minded? Well, I think Jesus is, is, he was on this earth, and he's the, he's the Savior. But I need to do some good works, and I need to walk in the Ten Commandments and do all these things to make him happy. It's double-minded. You either have it in Christ, or you don't. There's no middle ground. You don't serve him and yourself. You either serve him or yourself. So that means if you take one little tiny bit of your faith and stick it on something else, that's now your God. They worship their own bellies. Hebrews 3.19. We're going to go in deeper into Hebrews because there's a lot of good stuff in Hebrews 3. Uh, so we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. We're going to break this one down because I'll, I hope you guys are watching. Don't click away. Y'all that I've shadow banned, y'all that I, I that we disagree, don't click away. Watch this and look at these scriptures. 
I'm not doing this because I'm trying to do this whole I gotcha or I told you so thing. I'm trying to get you to see the truth that is in the scripture. Not me, in the scripture. That's why I'm going to break down Hebrews 3. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Now a lot of people stop right there. And I see them put this in comments. For by grace you have been saved through faith. They're reading Hebrews 2, 8. They are quoting it. And they'll put, but, right next to it. No, that's not all of Hebrews 8. The rest of Hebrews 8 is, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, but they drop that piece off. Then they, they skip over Hebrews 2, 8, 2, 9 completely. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. They want to justify themselves. It's pride, it's arrogance, and it's vanity. And it's death. Now look at this. James 1, 13 through 15. Let no, one, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. God does not tempt you and he does not inflict you. He may chastise you, but that's completely different. For God cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. The desire when it has conceived gives birth to sin and sin when it is fully grown brings forth death. James 1 6 but let him ask in faith with no doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind now we're really going to drive this one home you want to you want to make God happy do this Hebrews eleven six. and without faith it is impossible to please him it's impossible to please God without faith your works don't please him your obeying the Ten Commandments doesn't please him. Your living according to Torah, the mitzvah, doesn't please him. None of that stuff pleases him. Your faith in his Son, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that's how you make him happy. That's how you please him. Because when you do that, he's able to work with you. But if you're adding something else, he cannot work with you. Because you're reaching out for Jesus with this hand, but you're looking back at your old life. Because you can't decide which one you want. Remember what happened to Lot's wife? For whoever will draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Are you seeking yourself or him? There are some people that are in this just to get rewards in heaven. I don't want crowns. I don't want rewards. I just want to be with my Lord. I just want to be in his presence for all eternity. That stuff... If he chooses to give me any of those things, fine. But that's not my desire and that's not my driving force behind this. I've come to the complete understanding that this life is nothing. And that there's nothing waiting for me on the other side but darkness. And I want to be with him in the light. Because I have always looked all my life for that pure love that I always had. And that I've had to hold back because the world doesn't accept that kind of stuff. And the only place I can find it is in his presence. Because one time, that much I was in his presence. And I felt that love. And it was harmonious. It was beautiful. That's what I want. Hebrews 4.11 Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. What kind of disobedience is that? Unbelief. The unforgivable sin. There is only one thing that you can do that will get you sent to hell. And you're not being sent to hell. God sends no one to hell. You choose it of your own accord. And that's the sin of unbelief. Now, when you understand that that's the sin that gets you destroyed, you go read all those passages talking about sin and sinning. It changes what they mean. Now, it's not talking about these little carnal sins that we do that are easy to deal with. They've been dealt with already on the cross. Now you understand it's about unbelief. Now you have to ask yourself, do I truly believe in him? Romans 11.32, for all you people that think you're doing good, you're following the law, you're following the Ten Commandments, for God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. So even though you think you're sinless, you're still disobedient. That doesn't justify what you're doing. It should change your mind. 
Romans 8, 7, For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Do you guys know what this is referring to? It's not referring to the one who, the once saved, always saved person that says it's okay to sin, which we don't say that anyway. That's the person who thinks they're justifying their flesh by living according to the Ten Commandments. They think they're doing something good because they're making God happy by their actions. That's what that's referring to. That's carnal-minded. Your flesh has already been dealt with. Why are you still trying to justify it? This, again, it's all about Christ. He's the one that dealt with this stuff. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What sin? Unbelief. All the other sins have already been dealt with. It's the sin of unbelief that gets you death, and gets you sent home. Let's see here. John 16, 9. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. It's all about belief. That's the thing that gets you hemmed up, is belief. Now, there's a lot of people, they look like Christians. They talk like Christians. They act like Christians. But they're not Christians, because they don't put their faith and trust in the one true God. They don't believe in the one Lord. It's all Christ. Christ died. Christ was crucified. Christ was resurrected. Christ ascended. Christ sits next to, sits next to the Father. Romans 4.20 no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith and he gave glory to God. He believed. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Not through him and the Ten Commandments, not through him and Torah. Him and him alone. Full faith and trust in him. Now let's go to Hebrews 3. The title for the first part of it is Jesus is greater than Moses. Therefore, holy brothers, so he's addressing believers. Therefore, holy brothers, so you know what you know what we're about to address here. You who share in a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession. So if you remember how they did things back in Israel with the high priest, nobody went into the Holy of Holies but the high priest. The way you stood before God was through that high priest. Jesus is now our high priest. We have to go through him. Verse 2, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. So God created all the materials. Christ is building the temple of God with those materials. That's us. The bride. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. He was part of prophecy. He delivered the message and paved the way. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house, if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. Hope of what? Hope of Christ, salvation in Christ. Hope of our day of redemption. Hope of being raptured out of here away from all these troubles to go be with our Lord. And our confidence in that is a confidence in the truth and what the Bible says. Standing strong in that truth, being rooted in that truth. Verse 7, and it's a rest for the people of God. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. That was what, like what would happen, what happened back in Exodus. That's what he's talking about. When your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. See how it's about the heart? 
they have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. He's addressing, he's addressing believers. Take care, brothers. Talking about them being unbelieving. Why would he say that? Because not everybody who says they're a believer is truly a believer. Not everybody who says they're a brother is truly a brother. Go read the book of Acts. They were always fighting with these guys. Go read the, the letters in Timothy. Um, they're always having problems with people trying to cause division. Hebrews 13, But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That's what we're doing as watchmen. All you grace preachers, all you watchmen that are here on YouTube, that are doing this according to the truth, this is what we're doing right here. Hebrews 3.13, But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Exhort, strongly encourage or urge someone to do something. Urge, encourage, call on, enjoin, adjure, charge, press, pressure, pressurize, lean on, push, spur, incite, goad, pointy stick to, to move goats, goad, bid, entreat, implore, beseech, advise, counsel, admonish, warn. That's what we're doing. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. People want to talk about being saved. Well, you've got to be good to the end. That's No. Hebrews 3 says something totally different. Hold on to our original confidence firm to the end. That it is Christ and only Christ. As it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For those, uh, For who were those who heard and yet rebelled. Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? So he's saying, is, is, look, they literally were looking at God. They knew everything that was going on. They were very aware of what was happening. And yet they still refused to believe. Always learning and never coming to the truth. They still refused to trust. And what happened to them? The ground opened up and swallowed them. Whole generation gone. That's why they were out there for 40 years. That whole trip that they took should have only taken them a week. Because other people have made that trip. should have only been a week. It took them 40 years. So what, what, how does that apply to us now? Well, look at what we have going on now. Same thing that was going on then. That's all shadows. Moses was the archetype of Jesus. All of these people are sitting there with Moses. They see the truth. They know the truth. They're hearing the trumpets. They're hearing the, the teachings. They're seeing him come down off the mountain with the Ten Commandments. Yet they still walked in unbelief. They knew about it. They were aware of it. Just knowing doesn't make you saved. They were aware of it. But they never believed in it. They never trusted in it. Look, you can know all, the, all that you want. Atheists know. They know about this stuff just like everyone else walk right up to the threshold and you can stand there and lean on the doorpost and go, I don't know if I want to go in. And just be leaning there in unbelief. You have to cross the threshold into belief. That's the step you have to make. He can pull you there and get you at the door, but you have to walk through. You have to make that choice. That's why predestination is true, but not for pre-salvation. You still have to choose Christ. You still have to walk over there. Look, people can be, can live perfectly according to the law. Paul was perfect in the law and still be in unbelief. So all y'all trying to be good, where's your faith? Because it doesn't look like it's in Christ. But look at what this is saying. These people rebelled while they were standing in his presence. The same thing is happening now. We have people claiming to be Christian and they're not. Their end is darkness, and they don't even see it. And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? What did they sin? Sin of unbelief. Sin of not trusting. 
We're going to look at it in just a minute. And to whom did he swear that he would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see, here's the verse we covered, so we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. Those who sinned, was it carnal sin? Nope. The sin of unbelief. Disobedient. Was it because they weren't following the Ten Commandments or Torah? Or living according to how these other people say you're supposed to live in order to be obedient to God? Nope. Verse 19 brings the whole thing together and tells you exactly what he's referring to. So we see they were unable to enter because of unbelief. Yet they were chosen. They were the chosen people. Standing there visually watching God. They literally walked through walls of water in, with the, when the Dead Sea was parted, or the Red Sea was parted. And they still had unbelief. They knew they had all kinds of head knowledge, but they had no heart knowledge. And this is the difference between a true Christian and a not a true Christian. A true Christian and false Christian, a believer and an unbeliever. They can both look exactly the same. But one has it up here and one has it in here. And the one that has it in here is the one that's saved. And this is the problem with a lot of people. And we run into them constantly. They're not abiding in the truth. As it is put down in God's word. Like that one, the one girl talking, oh, you're using the ESV. It says her, but in the King James it says it. Yeah, and I've proved to you that that word it referred to her. I don't just do this stuff randomly. I check it first. But that's what's happening. Hebrews 3 is very clear on this, and the very last verse tells you that. They can't, couldn't enter because of unbelief. Now in Exodus... They couldn't enter the Holy Land because of unbelief. Here and now with this, you won't enter heaven because of unbelief. Go read the story of Exodus, Exodus and then apply it to your life. Anything match? This is clear as crystal. There's no other way to, to see this. Let's see. A negative particle in the base of properly to miss the mark miss the mark unbelief as so not share in the prize what's the prize salvation to disbelieve willfully and perversely not believe disobedient obey not unbelieving Willfully and perversely. Willful sin? Willfully walking in unbelief? Makes a whole lot of other stuff make more sense, doesn't it? Now we're not looking at carnal sin. We're looking at faith. And it's all about faith. All those, But it says sins. Mm -hmm. What's the Greek say? Because that's what it's translated from is the Greek. What's the Greek say? Kind of obvious. So you have to examine yourself. And I know you guys aren't going to do it. But I'm still going to do these videos and cover this stuff because these little tiny details explain it. Now you have to make a choice. Now th those of y'all that are on track, I, you know I'm not talking to you. This is going to help edify you and this is going to build up your confidence. But to all those other people out there, if you are not abiding by this, and I'm showing you that you're not abiding by this, what does that tell you? You now have to look at this and apply it to your life, not everybody else. Your life. Are you walking in unbelief? You can know about Jesus all you want to. I've had people tell me, I know about Jesus. I believe in the cross at Calvary, but that's not salvation. That's head knowledge. I know about it too. I've seen the proof. Physical proof that we have of it. I know about it. But do you truly believe? And that's the threshold you have to cross. That's the decision you have to make. Because in Hebrews 3, he's talking about, he's, re he's referencing brothers and sisters in Christ. And he's telling them, be careful unless you're walking in unbelief. The Spirit of God may not actually be in you. Because you know about it, but you're not believing. Go read Acts 10 and Acts 11. 
two different instances where Pharisees and Gentiles are in the same room and they're preaching. And the Holy Spirit just smothers the Gentiles all of a sudden. No warning. Because they believed. And it was in here. Then look at what the Pharisees say. Wait a minute. The, the Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles? It didn't even touch us. What's going on? They took them outside and baptized them after they finished talking to them. Some of them still didn't get it. They laid hands on them. Some of them still didn't get it. And these are the ones that got into false teachings. Just like the people I shadow banned earlier. If you're following a teaching other than what's given in this word, you're in unbelief. You're not saved. I can say that. Because the scripture tells me I can say that. The scripture points it out quite clear. Faithlessness, that is negative disbelief. Want of Christian faith. Or positively, unfaithfulness, disobedience, unbelief. So that's what you need to do to fix this problem. You want to know truth? Do this. Let's go check the commentary over here real quick on the right. There is a peril lest familiarity with God's word should beget indifference to them. Wait a minute. Okay, it didn't change. <laughs> there is a peril lest familiarity with God's word should beget indifference to them. The path may be trodden hard by the sower's feet. That story of the wilderness wanderings is for all time. It, and it refers to now. That's a shadow of what we're doing now. Still men disbelieve and disobey. Come on. Still they doubt that God is able. Still they err in their hearts and therefore fail to understand with their heads. Still they wander to and fro with weary souls and restless feet. But if they, but if they who fail to believe in words given by Moses were wrapped around by the winding sheets of sand, what will or what will not be the fate of those who refuse the words of Christ? Indeed, outer darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. How wonderful it is that, that by just trusting, we may be partners with our Lord of his rest, life, glory, and resources, Hebrews 3.14. But we must listen to the inner voice, soft and low, speaking in the horrible of our hearts, 1 Kings 19-12. Obey it and you will enter into the rest of God. Refuse it and you will be as certainly excluded from the divine rest as they from Canaan. Remember the scripture? He was talking to Elijah. 1 Kings 18. It's like 1 Kings 18 and 1 Kings 19. Yeah, 1 Kings 18. So let's go look at 1 Kings 18 real quick. I'm going to remind you guys of this. 1 Kings 18. Here it is right here. First Kings 19.9 There he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous of, for the Lord. And the Lord of ho God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets by the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Remember what we just read here a little bit ago? in the thing on the, the, the commentary on the side. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. The still, remember the still small voice? 
And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. Ripping mountains apart. He's witnessing this. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. So it shook all those rocks that broke up. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. Still, small voice. Yeah, they gave the reference right there, 1 Kings 19, 12. But we must listen to the inner voice, soft and low, speaking in the horrible of our hearts, 1 Kings 19, 12. That's it right there. That's what it's talking about. So if we're so full of pride and arrogance, and, oh, i got to do this, i got to do that, we're missing that little voice. That's what he says. Be still and listen. That's why he says, be quiet. Let me work. Let me, let me talk to you. Obey it, and you will enter the rest of God. Refuse it, and you will be as certainly excluded from the divine rest as they from Canaan. You have to be in belief, and that's the one sin that's going to get you sent to hell, because God, God can't just look at you and go, hey, you know what? You were good enough, even though you didn't believe. Come on. You can sit over there. No. You have to make a decision, and if you haven't made that decision, that's a problem. For you, not for us, we'll shed tears for you, but for you, but that's what this is talking about. What else is it talking about? So you can disagree all you want to, but that's how this works. You can learn and learn and know. There are archaeologists that know all this stuff. They're literally in Israel right now, and they still don't believe. And they're seeing the proof. They're holding the seal of Isaiah in their hand. They know it's Isaiah the prophet. They, they have relics that have Jesus' name on them. Other cultures have records of Jesus Christ visiting them in his early years. Remember what uh, Peter said? I suppose if all the things that, were, that Christ did were written down, the whole world couldn't hold all the books. What do you think he was at doing all that stuff? It wasn't just there. And there are people that still don't believe. They know it up here, but they don't know it in here. So, do you want to stay out of hell? Put your full faith and trust in Christ. Believe in God. That's how it happens. That's how it works. That's how you do it. There's, it's all over the Bible. It's everything. Old and New Testament. The whole Bible is designed for that. I used to think there was no point to the Old Testament. But then I started to realize, no. That was the shadow of what's coming. That was giving us the markers. Hey, look, here's the confirmation of what I've been telling you. So, there it is. I don't know what else to say. I pray for the right words, but I don't know what else to say. So here's the superior to Moses, dwelling on those opening words, holy, such is God's ideal for us. Brethren, by reason of our union with Christ and with one another in him, partakers, etc., God is ever calling upward and heavenward. Jesus comes from God as apostle and goes for us to God as priest in his human life. How humble and faithful. But he originally built the Jewish pol uh, polity and commonwealth. He was and is as much greater than Moses as the architect, than the foreman, and the son, than the servant. It is not enough to begin with the Christian race. We must hold fast our confidence and hope to the end. That was the point specifically, or especially, to be emphasized among these harried people. These Hebrew Christians missed the splendid ceremonial of their ancient faith and were suffering heavily from persecution and opposition. But was it not worthwhile to persevere, if only to be recognized as belonging to the household of God? Surely for them and for us the experiences of Israel in the forty years of wandering are full of warning. Be admonished by that wilderness cemetery. Be admonished by that wilderness cemetery. Those bones 
of all those people are still over there in those ancient old cracks in the ground. Somebody here recently found some. And they're like, are these the people that were swallowed up by the ground? It's hard to find the information, but I stumbled across it a few months ago. Guys, this stuff's real. And it's serious. And look, you've only got one chance to get this. It isn't like a deal where you're just like, go test drive a car every so often and go eventually decide you want it. He wants you to search it out and prove it to yourself. But there's not a whole lot of time to make that decision. So you need to figure it out. If you already got the head knowledge up here, you've only got one step to make. And that's to put it in here. Read this for yourself. eSword is free to download. Google eSword. Download it and do your own research. It's not like I'm doing something that's, you know, only for certain people to do. A whole bunch of other people are using eSword now. It works really good. So, do your own studies on this because each one of these, not all of them, each one of them has their own little commentary that goes along with it. And so far, they've been pretty accurate. So anyway, guys, that's, I didn't mean to get too long-winded, but this is important. This is desperately important that people get this because the video I did earlier before this one, you guys saw the state of unbelief in people, not just a false doctrine, completely unbelieving in Christ. They're focused on the she, the her, and all this kind of stuff, and they're not realizing what they're doing to themselves. What, do you all think you have a higher position because you believe that? It's wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And that's according to all the other scripture in the Bible. And y'all keep sending me to go look at Revelations 19. Go look at Revelations 12. That's Go look at those passages. Go download eSword. Go into the King James Plus. Go into that book of Revelations and look at what that's referring to. It's so simple. Which one was it? 19.9? Uh, and to her, perhaps akin to the base word G109, through the area of a baffling wind, backward, the reflexive pronoun self, used alone or in the compound, remember we covered this already, of the third person and with the proper personal pronoun, the proper personal pronoun of the other persons, her, it, one, the other, mine, own, said, uh, same, self, selves, she, that, their, them, their, into, of, on, things, this, they, those, together, very, which, compare. Just like in Ephesians 5, Ephesians 19, or Revelation 19, blew you out of the water again. Your argument is invalid because you're not properly looking at what these things are saying. Oh, but you're not looking at the King James. Look again. I clicked on King James Plus. It breaks it down and shows you what the Greek is for all these. This is Strong's. I don't know how to make it any easier for you. I'm literally showing you the answers. But they kept telling me, go look at Revelation 19.8. I, I just did it. I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. His wife has, has made herself ready. Um, probably from the base of G1096, a woman, specifically a wife. Wife, woman. So you're going to say Revelation 19.7 says it's a specific person? The reference is for a specific person. When you dig up this word uh, that they're using here, gune, it's probably a verb. Or not, uh, not a verb. It's probably not being used as a pronoun. whether a virgin or married or a widow, a wife of a betrothed woman, bride, wife, wives, wives, woman, womans. So it refers to plural also, meaning multiple people. We can go all day. 
I'm not going to send it this this long. It, it is. It's a noun. It's descriptive. It's not a verb. Active. It's a descriptive word. So, you figure it out and tell me what you think. I already did. Trust in God. Believe in Him. All day, every day. Nothing else matters. You must get this right. If you cannot get this right, you have a problem. Not me. Not anyone else. You. Because it's your turn. I'm a watchman. I'm sounding the alarm. My hands are clean. I sounded the warning. If you don't receive it, now the blood is on your hands. Ezekiel 33. The love of God, John 3, 16 and 17. In fact, I'm going to show it. This is important to know these things. The love of God is, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. How do you get saved? Simple. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Not a result of acts, labor, deed. What's the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15. 1 through 4. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel that I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand. He's talking to save people, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Simple. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John condensed. All right. I, I don't know any other easier way to put this. I hope you guys find something out in this that resonates with you, that helps you understand what this stuff means, because it's really clear in the scriptures. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you in the next one.